Very good morning. Good afternoon. Sorry. I'm Dr. P. Adilakshmi, Professor and Chairman, Women's Cell, Prasad V. Patlori Siddhartha Institute of Technology. We welcome all the participants to the webinar on Balanced Diet, Key to Master Ever Metabolism, organized by Women's Cell of Prasad V. Patluri Siddhartha Institute of Technology in association with Women's Cell of P.B. Siddhartha College of Arts and Science, Vijayawada. Today we have with us a very distinguished professor, Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Garu, who is having a rich experience in research, project management, and academics. We thank Madam for accepting our request with your very short notice to deliver a talk on balanced diet. As we have recently faced the pandemic, health has become very important for everybody. Eating healthy diet is all about feeling great. Having more energy, improving your health, and boosting your mood. Good nutrition, physical activity, and healthy body weight are essential parts of a person's overall health and well-being. In this regard, we requested Madam to share her insights, which will be very useful to all of us. Now I request my colleague, Dr. Swapna Assistant Professor, Member of Women's Cell, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Prasad V. Potluri Siddhartha Institute of Technology, to give a formal introduction of our chief guest. Thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hello. Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Dr. D. Vijayalakshmi Garu. Presently, she is working as a emeritus scientist, ICAR, Department of Food Science and Nutrition. Under the guidance of uh, Dr. Vijayalakshmi Garu, more than 25 uh, students finished their MSc and 10 students finished their PhD. Ma'am handled uh, 10 international projects like USAID, Puduri project, Iowa, USAID, FAO, IFFRI, Indo Euro Namaste, IFAD, MSSRF, Ghana, Indo German. And also, Madam uh, held projects in national projects like. Uh, ICAR, NAIP, DBT, CASST, National Higher Educational System, ICARL, World Bank projects. And Dr. Vijayalakshmi Garu published uh, various research papers uh, in national and international journals. So she also published Fundamentals of Food Science and Nutrition textbook for undergraduate students and also published chapters uh, in Springer rated books. Ma'am has taken training at uh, Puduri University and Iowa Universities and our USAID LOO projects USA. 
she has also participated advisor on the perspective on women's uh, entrepreneurial groups in an african context from uh, january 2010 at uh, ghana africa she visited ladrobi university australia to discuss regarding the study abroad program in 2012 she uh, she attended the workshop methodological approaches to social et uh, ecological systems research as a key person held at university of uh, gottingen at germany at 2013 she got project on urbanization effect on conception pattern dietary deserve uh, dis 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 the dis asthma sorry uh, oh, nice. okay ma'am human uh, neutralist status at uh, kessel university germany she has also visited germany universities four times and had worked on teaching curriculum she is supervised co guided to german student uh, dr marika from 2015 to 2018 so coming to the awards and recognitions she received recognized member of national assessment and accreditation council nac and gvi of accreditation of colleges and universities ma'am was a recognized member as a scientific panel member of food safety and standard authority of india and gvi india she also awarded as extreme reviewer of a journal of a, a dairying food home science at various uh, academic years 2010 2018 19 20 21 at various academics ma'am got a certification merit award from us U UAS Bangalore for the research projects. Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Garu been the reviewer in various journals like Karnataka Journal of Agriculture Science, ARCC Journal, Journal of uh, Indian Council of Agriculture Research. Thank you, ma'am, for uh, readily accepting our invitation. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Garu to give away the presentation, ma'am. Thank you, madam, for introducing. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, ma can I move to the next slide, ma'am? No, no. Can you put to the full screen, or it will be only yes. visible to the? Yes, ma'am. Full screen is share screen is better. Ma'am, is it coming, ma'am? Yeah, it's coming. My first slide I could see, but the full screen is better. Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, is it okay, ma'am? Yeah, it's okay. Can I start now? Is it audible? Yes, ma'am. You are audible, ma'am. Yeah. Good afternoon to all. I am Vijay Lakshmi, working in the Department of Food Science and Nutrition from University of Agriculture Sciences, Bangalore. And a nice introduction by your HOD, madam. Today, I am going to speak on balanced diet, the key to master your metabolism. This is for all the age groups. Next, please. Before balanced nutrition, we should know what is nutrition and health. Good nutrition and healthy eating habits are very crucial to keep the immune system of the body, especially during these times. However, your health may get affected if you do not follow proper food and nutrition practices.
The best recommendation for staying healthy is to follow the general health advice, such as eating a balanced diet. A balanced diet is where the, both the quality and quantity are matching in a balanced form. Therefore, there are some recommendations to have optimum metabolism. What do you mean by optimal metabolism? A metabolism is chemical processes that occur within a living organism in order to maintain life. Adequate balanced nutrition is essential to have optimum metabolism. The more the food you take, that is a processed food, and the more additives you will have to it will be adding up. So the more likely it will have negativity which affects the body. Therefore, metabolic balance recommends local, natural, organic foods as fresh as possible. What are the indicators of optimum metabolism? How do we know it? This will be a question. First of all, you should know for the proper metabolism, you should have proper digestion. The sleep quality, the fitness, to participate in daily activities. It is not just the BMI, that is the body mass index. You should have the interest and fitness to participate in daily activities. So to have this, you have a food pyramid in order to have the right kind of food. So please see the pyramid. The bottom of the pyramid, it says, eat adequately. That means there are cereals, then in that you have the rice, wheat, millets. So you can eat all these because they are the staple diet. Eat adequately. The next is eat liberally. That is fruits and vegetables. You can eat liberal amount of them, at least four to five portions. The next is eat moderately. That is milk and milk products, animal foods and pulses and the legumes. Then the pyramid narrow downs that it shows, please eat sparingly. So what are those? Those are fats and oils and sugar. So these foods are made up of constituents, which we call them as nutrients. The foods are made up of six nutrients for a balanced diet. They are carbohydrates, protein, fat, vitamins, minerals, and water. The nutrients are classified into two groups, macronutrients and micronutrients. The macronutrients are protein, fat, and carbohydrate, which we require them in a larger quantity, and they help to maintain a healthy weight and good metabolic. The micronutrients particularly Minerals and vitamins, A, C, D, E and B complex vitamins, and minerals such as iron, selenium, zinc, magnesium and copper, they play an important role in ensuring the immunity system can function properly. So these are the, let us take one by one the nutrients. The first one is a carbohydrate. You can see the picture where all the fruits, grains are there and potatoes. So in carbohydrate, the first recommended point is whole grains, unlike refined grains, they maintain most of the structure of the grain, keeping the layers to hold the vitamins, minerals and fiber. In addition, the whole grains, they also provide carbohydrates which give energy. That is, one gram of carbohydrate gives four calories of energy. And it can help us feel fuller for a longer period. So the point is, please choose whole grains over refined grains. The next are the proteins. Here you have in the picture, the animal foods. Then you have the pulses. Then you have the nuts. So the pulses, this is, which are rich sources of protein. The main function of protein is bodybuilding. Okay, it helps in the growth. It helps in your 
body tissues, muscles, and also for hormone functions and enzymatic functions. We can get proteins both from the animals as well as plant-based proteins. Like in the picture, you can see all the animal foods, the pulses, egg, and then fish and the meat. And one you have to remember, our requirements of proteins, it changes depending upon the stages of life. What do we mean that? That is, when the child is born, the requirement from zero to six months for the baby, the protein requirements are higher when compared to that of this six to 12 months. Then the school going child, that is the four to six years preschoolers and school going child and adolescents, that is a vulnerable group. They need more protein because the growth occurs, bodybuilding occurs. Then after in the adults for the women, during the expecting stage and lactating stage, the amount of protein increases. So it depends upon the stages of life. Then the third micronutrient is fat. Many of us are very, very conscious. What kind of fat should we consume? Whether saturated fats, unsaturated fats, healthy fats, unhealthy fats. So what are fats? They are important part of healthy diet. However, not all the fats have the same effect on our health. You have to remember there are visible fats and invisible fats. What do you mean by visible fats? Visible fats that we can see and feel. Those are oils and fats. Invisible fat, we will not be able to see. For example, you take milk, the fat is not visible. You take groundnuts and pulses, the fat is not visible, but they are present in it. So when we plan a diet, you have to see that both visible and invisible fats are matched. Then swapping saturated fats with unsaturated fats, those are oils, can help to lower the cholesterol levels and reduce the risk of heart diseases. We can do, how do we do this? We can do this by reducing our intake of foods such as fatty meats, high fat dairy products and tropical oils like coconut oil and adding foods as nuts and plant oils. So these are the fats and oils. So what are healthy fats? The healthy fats are monosaturated fats. You obtain them from olive oil. Then you have the nuts and also from the seeds. The oils from the seeds are very good for health. Then you have polyunsaturated fats, which include omega-3 fatty acids. They are found in fish and also they are found in flax seeds and walnuts. So these are considered as healthy fats which you can consume because the recommended quantity will be only from 10 to 20 grams at the most 25 grams. What are unhealthy fats? You must have heard about the word trans fats. They are the vegetable shortenings. So they are used in some of the bakery products and then crackers, candies, cookies, snack foods. Many of the children and adolescents are very fond of these foods, but you have to be very careful. No amount of trans fat is safe. You have to take care of your health. Next, please. Madam, you are already at the next slide, ma'am. Consume yeah, enough fiber. Next one. Yeah, it's okay. over. Yeah, okay. consume enough fiber. Okay. So after the fats, it are the consume enough fiber. What is fiber? Nowadays, fiber plays a very important role. Indian Council of Medical Research has recommended we should have 30 to 40 grams of fiber per day. So where does this contributes to a healthy digestive system? So when we said when in the previous slide, when I said what is metabolism, optimum metabolism, I said you should have proper digestion. So fiber plays a very important role for healthy digestive system. And it offers a prolonged feeling of fullness, which helps for us overeating and where are they found all the vegetables are rich sources of fiber then the fruits 
then whole pulses and whole grains. When you say whole grains, it includes oats. Nowadays, many people in the urban, they consume oats and brown rice. Some of them also consume the grain amaranthus. And nowadays, it has become a very good trend to consume millets. For example, if you take ragi and other millets, you cannot do any kind of polishing to them. Okay, After milling, you cannot do any sieving also. So the whole fiber is within it. So consumption of millets is very good. Then buckwheat, quinoa. So anything, all these whole grains are much better than the pastas or the white bread. So try to avoid grain foods like cookies, cakes, cakes and snack foods, etc. And try to avoid more of vegetables and fruits and whole grains for the amount of fiber. The next is you have to eat a lot of plenty of fruits and vegetables where the food measurement has already shown. Eat liberally. You have the colorful pictures of fruits and vegetables. They contain vitamins, minerals and fiber. And most important is antioxidants. They help in preventing arthritis. They boost wound healing and normal immune functions. We should at least have four to five portions of vegetables and fruits. It might come around 400 grams. What are anti antioxidants? In the previous slide, I said fruits and vegetables are good sources of antioxidants. Substances that fight off free radicals in our body. What are free radicals? Free radicals are compounds within our bodies that may lead to chronic diseases and are involved in the damage of the cell tissues. So you have to protect them from any kind of degenerative diseases. So try to consume more of fruits and vegetables, especially the vitamin C food. What are vitamin C foods? Amla, orange, lime, all citrus fruits. Vitamin E, the oils. Beta carotene. The beta carotene is a precursor of vitamin A. It is present in any kind of yellow, orange and pink colored fruits and vegetables. Especially the carrots. They are very, very rich sources of beta carotene. So if you consume it, you get more amount of antioxidants, which can prevent you from any kind of chronic diseases. So these are the vegetables, different kind of vegetables. You have colored vegetables, the brinjols, they are rich sources of anthocyanins. You have the capsicum, both yellow and red color, which are good sources of beta carotene. The beans, which are good sources of as I have mentioned, fiber, and you have the strawberries, which are good sources of beta carotene and vitamin C. So here, the focus main point is any food, every food, whatever we consume, undergoes certain amount of processing. So it can be curing, it can be freezing, it can be milling, it can be pasteurization, but nearly all the foods undergo processing. But when you have the highly processing like soda, packed cookies, potato chips, instant noodles, and chicken nuggets, they are highly processed. So what does the research say? The research of the nutrition, it says that in National Institute of Health, they found, they did the research on two groups. The one group which they consume continuously the processed foods every day, day to day, and the other group was occasionally or they don't consume. So when they have collected the data, it was found that the persons or the group of people who were consuming daily the highly processed food, they were having 500 extra calories than the other group. So this shows that and the research found that they were more prone to heart diseases when compared to the other group who were not consuming processed foods. There was also another study by Kelvin Hall, who says that why people get tempted to eat processed food. He collected the data and he said, the reason behind is all these processed foods are softer and easier to chew and swallow. For example, you take potato chips, you take any kind of nuggets and kurkures. They're so tasty and very soft and very chewing 
very fast you can finish it or one packet. And these foods provide very, very little nutritional benefit. They are not needed for a healthy diet and should be only enjoyed occasionally in smaller amounts. Then you have the water, another nutrient, which I said, you always say, please stay hydrated because our body, 65% of the human body is consisting of the water, 65 to 70%. So the body needs optimum intake of water irrespective of the season. So usually we recommend two to three liters you have to consume. It's imperative to drink clean, warm water to curtail the risk of stomach-related ailments. The reason, see, during pandemic period, earlier it used to be only fresh, clean water. Now we are focusing on warm water, isn't it? So sometimes when everybody is at home during the lockdown period, it does feel a little boring to have the bland or plain water. So you can refresh it by adding slices of lime, lemon, a little bit of cucumber, mint leaves, tulsi leaves, or berries. You can also swap morning cup of tea with herbs like ginger, because ginger has a very nice component which is called gingerol. It has got an anti-inflammatory property, and masala chai is also very good in order to help to boost immunity. The other drinks, such as coffee, unsweetened tea, unsweetened coffee, and flavored water, or good choices for the hydration. Yeah, so please drink hygienic and sanitized clean water. So I told you about the coffee. When we say beverages, the tea and the coffee. You have to be having loads of coffee through the day may seem to be a good idea because see, Many of the persons are working from home, that is from online. The children are also at home, the women and the elders. So what sometimes when you get bored, you start drinking more coffee. Try to limit your coffee only to two cups to avoid jitterness. What exactly happens? Because coffee has got caffeine. So too much of it, it causes anxiety, fatigue, headache, and even digestive problems. So some people have, the people who have come from abroad, from Europe countries and US, they try to use high fat creamers. So that is also not good. And too much of sugar also in your drink is, is not at all advisable. The reason is, when you have the caffeine and other components, they decreases the bioavailability of iron, calcium and zinc. This is very, very important. Even though you are trying to get very good nutrition from the foods, but due to the habit of consuming more of tea and more of coffee than the normal dosage, they will not make it the availability of iron, calcium and zinc. So the bioavailability will be hindered. So I have just given an example here. Suppose if you take one cup of coffee, that is 150 ml, it contains 115 milligram of caffeine and iced tea contains 40 milligram and colas 15 milligrams and hot chocolates 4 milligrams. So you have to really avoid it and adequately you have to consume. And then counting the portion size. The portion size is very important. You try to watch the TV and one packet of chips is gone completely over. You don't realize how much is one packet. So the portion size is very important when you are consuming any kind of foods. It can be difficult to get portion size right, especially when cooking at home. Okay, so understanding what is right portion takes time and it can help you stay in energy balance. And sometimes it can lead to undereating or overeating also because all the foods will not have the same portion size. And also we have to remember the adult portion size and children portion size will not be same. The children's portion size will be smaller. So depending upon this, the portion size has to be controlled in order to have a good metabolic and also good balanced diet. Vitamin D is very important because we call vitamin D as a sunshine vitamin because you can synthesize it from the 
body from the skin that is it contains a precursor which is called as 7 dehydrocholesterol and gets converted as vitamin d in the body so the sun is the best source of vitamin d however during quarantine period it was very difficult to have good sun exposure because many people were not able to go out so it was recommended we were recommending a very good food you have to consume which are rich sources of vitamin d that is the whole cereals egg pulses whole pulses animal foods and and also you have to have lot of milk and sometimes even milk products also were recommended and the recommendation for vitamin d is 400 international units for all the age groups so at least short periods suppose if you are staying in an apartment at least a short walk you have to take by just coming out to the balconies if you are staying in an independent house at least upstairs or around this space whatever is available at home you have to have 15 to 30 minutes walk or at least the elders should sit because Deficiency of vitamin D leads in children rickets. That is, the children can tend to get the bow legs and knock knees. And for the elders, joint pains also occur. So you have to be very careful with vitamin D. So 15 to 30 minutes of staying in the exposure of the sunlight is recommended. So I have till now spoken about the nutrients, both as macronutrients, that is carbohydrates, proteins, fat, vitamins and also the minerals so if there are there are some nutrients which are really focused for immunity if they are deficit then it is very difficult especially you have to take care of vitamin a vitamin e vitamin c zinc and selenium so what exactly happens these micronutrients once they are deficit in our diet it can increase the risks of infections it also impairs the T cell metabolism and also for the immunity and also impairs the function of phagocytes and also antibody productions will be impaired. So you have to see that try to consume more of the foods which are rich source of vitamin A, fruits and vegetables, milk and milk products, vitamin E, the oils, vitamin C, the citrus fruits, zinc, the mushroom and the whole grains and selenium also is present almost in all the fruit. So these foods have to be focused in order to have good immunity and good metabolic rate. So how do we strengthen our immunity? The best part is, for example, if you want the best ways to boost immunity is by increasing the intake of vitamin C, protein, like sprouts. For example, this is a simple method. You do have green gram. You soak it in the water and then allow it to sprout after removing the water or in a, you can just close it in a vessel or in a cloth. After sprouting, you can see that the sprouts are rich sources of vitamin C. The grains, it has fiber. It also has protein and it is easily digestible for all the age groups. So once in a way, you can always make the sprouts and make it as a salad or cook into different dishes and then consume. And the second one is sometimes due to humidity, we cannot have larger meals. We do not recommend larger meals. A small meals have to be taken for proper digestion and to have the strength and immunity. Then the third one is, we as Indians, we use lot of herbs and spices in our diet. So try to consume ginger, garlic, cinnamon, turmeric and holy bell in your diet so that it gives lot of components which strengthen the immunity. And also, Foods rich in minerals and iron like pulses and cereal should be the key component of diet during rainy seasons. So let me give a few examples of immunity boosting foods. The first one is garlic. Everyone uses garlic in their diet. So they are loaded with a compound which is called as allicin. This compound, it fights the viruses and it boosts immunity. It is formed when a clove of a garlic is either chewed, crushed or chopped. Because of the presence of allicin, the unique flavor of garlic is identified. So how do you take it? Of course, in all the preparations you can add. Otherwise also, you can take two gloves of cloves of garlic and consume them with warm water every day. 
and make it of part of your daily diet and also by adding it in the soups. The next one is cinnamon. A preliminary lot of research has been conducted in Tauro College in New York. They found that cinnamon may contain antiviral properties. In addition to its proven ability to regulate blood pressure, as per the findings of the research, it says that cinnamon protects the body against viral infections. You can simply soak a cinnamon stick in warm water overnight and drink it in the next morning. In addition also, the cinnamon infused water, you can add a pinch of aromatic spice to your morning cup of coffee or tea, which enhances the flavor. Also, it gives a lot of health benefits. Yogurt. Yogurt is very important. Yogurt contains probiotic. Probiotic is one of the main ingredients of yogurt which is said to lessen the impact of respiratory infections caused by influenza virus. According to the research, there's plenty of research which has been done on prebiotics and probiotics. On probiotics published in the National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI, they say that consumption of this is feasible way to decrease the incidence of respiratory tract infection. Many of us say that Yogurt during cold and cough and sometimes you are not supposed to consume yogurt. But that is a wrong concept. Consumption of yogurt definitely reduces the RTI that is respiratory tract infections. Mushrooms. Mushrooms are very good. It is a very good source of, they contain beta glucons, which are known to have antiviral and antibacterial compounds. They help for the immunity and also the subside inflammation. So you can prepare the mushrooms in the form of soups or with other vegetables. Also, it can be stir fried and then sorted with the oil and then consumed. So different kinds of mushrooms are available. Oyster mushrooms are there, butter mushrooms are there. Any mushrooms, whichever is available, you can always come consume this because it strengthens and gives lot of uh, immunity and also it is recommended for persons suffering from diabetes mellitus. Another one is the muleti. In Hindi, this is a root which we call it as in Hindi muleti. In English, it is called as liquid rice. This root has been widely used in traditional remedies. It contains an active compounds which possess the pharmacological activities such as antiviral, antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, anti-tumor and other activities. A lot of research has been done on this, especially on the anti-tumor properties. More often than not, this can be used for the sore throat and also for the cold and cough. So you can simply add this, boil this in a water and then you can just sip it as a decoction and also during the cold and cough times, it can be taken in the warm water. So, after the herbs and spices, the most important physical exercise. See, diet is very good where I spoke about the balanced diet. But until and unless you have good physical exercise, you cannot have a proper healthy life. So, erratic eating patterns and unhealthy food could definitely affect your immune system as well as adversely affect the physical and mental health. So you have to plan a daily physical activity, which we call it as home exercises, by taking regular breaks from sitting, by standing up and walking. Exactly what happens is if you're front of laptop for two to three hours continuously, it's not good. We don't advise at all. So you have to just get up and have a small walk or stand up so that you feel quite relaxed. And also you have to attend, if not go to any of the gyms or any to the centers, you can have online exercises that is yoga and meditation. But by taking a few steps during this period, you can ensure and remain in a good shape and boost your immune system to fight the coronavirus and also to maintain your health. 
conquering cravings many of us while sitting at home and doing the work irrespective of the age group whether it's a children or adolescents or school going elders or adults we try to have cravings we try to feel hungry or even if you are bored you try to eat something if you are truly hungry and have a hankering for something specific but make a good choices rather than just consuming unhealthy foods and processed foods suppose if you have sweet tooth and you want to consume something sweet choose a fruit it is also having good taste some people have taste for salt craving for salt you can eat nuts instead of potato chips some people have sourness for the taste try to drink lime juice and some people like creamy taste then you can go for yogurt unsweetened yogurt plain yogurt you go with adding a fruit flavor so that you can crave the hungers and also you can have good nutritious food instead of having any processed foods that is called as a conquering cravings impact of sleep sleep is very very important that is quality of sleep poor quality sleep can negatively affect both physical and mental health as well as it reduces the immune system's ability to resist infections therefore most important we are all addicted to electronic devices please don't blame to only the children or the students we always teachers try to blame students when they try to enter the class the first thing i tell the students please switch off your mobiles or don't carry your mobiles to the classrooms but uh, we are also doing the same thing even the teachers we are turning off electronic devices is most most important minimizing watching sometimes the watching news channels the same channels different channels will give you the same news in a different form it really causes anxiety and affects mental health especially during corona period so avoid it avoid taking too much of coffee tea that is caffeine and alcohol drinks and putting a regular schedule for keep sleeping is very very essential you try to sleep at about 11 or 12 o'clock and then get up at 9 o'clock no it is not advisable you should have a proper 8 hours of sleep which is called it which is called as quality of sleep so this gives if you follow a good diet i spoke about balanced diet if you follow good diet with micronutrients micronutrients and immune boosting nutrients and also by following the exercises and also by having the quality of sleep you will maintain optimum metabolism suppose if there are certain modification lifestyle modifications these are very very important why do you tend to put on overweight when you don't practice them properly when you don't eat within your own limits you tend to put on a that is called as overweight so overweight we measure it with body mass index where height and weight are taken care and also there is waist by hip ratio which should be of 0.8 and for women and 0.9 for men and then suppose if it is more than that abdominal obesity we call because it is one of the sign for heart diseases and the second point many people complain acidity why does it come because of the consumption of too much of coffee and tea and also you don't follow the timely following of food intake sometimes they skip the breakfast and straight away go for lunch so all this food habits are not good and sometimes acidity and alkalinity food has to be matched very well and third one hypertension if the person has any symptoms of hypertension frequent bp checkup is very very important and whole salt intake has to be modified other disorder can be lifestyle anemia so anemia is a public health problem so one has to really take care for anemia because our research says that 50% of women and children are anemic why does anemia occur nutritional anemia there are different kinds of anemia we call it as megaloblastic anemia pernicious anemia hemolytic anemia but the nutritional anemia is very important which one has to take care the symptoms so that is hemoglobin level is less the who recommends 12 g per dl and the children even with 9 and 10 are also they are suffering from anemia so you have to take care consume more of iron rich foods and folic acid foods where does iron rich foods are present 
You can consume among the cereals. You have millets. Ragi is a rich source of iron. And also rice products, that is rice flakes, they are rich sources of iron. Then raisins, that is dry grapes, they are rich sources. Instead of adding sugar to any kind of sweets, suppose if it is a malt or anything you want to prepare for children, please add jaggery because jaggery is a rich source of iron. And folic acid is present in all the foods and fruits and vegetables. Along with iron and folic acid, you also should take vitamin C foods because vitamin C enhances the absorption of iron. And also, you need to have good amount of protein because the simple proteins contains globulins. And these globulins combine with the pigment hema and they form hemoglobin. So in order to have good amount of all these proteins, vitamin C, iron and folic acid are very, very essential. Especially for the women in the expecting stage, that is 7th, 8th and 9th, the last trimester, usually the doctors prescribe folifer tablets which contains elemental iron and folic acid. There is an adult dosage and there is also child doses. Under the supervision of the doctors, you have, can take the supplements. And then there is another lifestyle disorder, diabetes mellitus. Here, the modification of diet is very important. There are two types of diabetes, that is juvenile diabetes and adult diabetes. And again, they have insulin dependent and non-insulin dependent. So depending on what kind of diabetes it is, you have to modify your diet with good amount of fiber in your diet so that the glucose level is maintained. There is a lot of research which has been conducted in National Institute of Nutrition, Hyderabad, that fenugreek seeds, that is methi seeds, if you can consume 25 grams per day, it lowers the high glucose level and brings it to normal level. It is very good sources of for uh, maintaining the glucose level. In fact, they have published and printed a book on what kind of recipes you can prepare out of fenugreek seeds. As I have mentioned earlier, mushrooms also are recommended for diabetes mellitus. And then in the lifestyle modification, you also have calcium deficiency and vitamin D deficiency which I said that vitamin D through the sunlight. And so if you do not take care of these two foods, so because cal calcium, we require 800 milligrams per day and vitamin D 400 IU. So that is the reason iron you require from 11 to 17 milligrams. Okay, so osteoporosis, that is the bone problems and joint pains occur. So one has to be very cautious in order to take rich foods of vitamin D. Another lifestyle modification will be stress. Staying at home is only it's a kind of stress for many during this pandemic period. And watching TV for a longer period also causes stress and headache. And eating excess of junk foods and then with electronic gadgets and loneliness because social life is very, very important. You have to keep in touch because now we are not able to reach to the relatives and family friends and parents and siblings. So you have to keep in touch so that they do not feel lonely because this is one of the modifications you have to really take care. Then now, recently a lot of research article, of course it is there, but nowadays a lot of articles have come here that we should have our dinner quite early. Why should we eat early? The reason is 7 p.m. to put your plate down. The reason is eating late in the night affects person's metabolism. Adults should eat nothing after 7 p.m. Early dinner gives body time to wind down and rest. Dinner with two hours of going to bed keeps the body on high alert. And blood pressure does not fall properly overnight. So you have to take care of it. But that doesn't mean that just because I mentioned it, adults should eat nothing after 7 p.m. See, it applies to everybody. Let us have a good dietary habit. By 7 to 7.30, dinner has to be served in order to have good health and metabolism. The nutritional supplements. Many times we hear, many of the persons who say that nutritional supplements should not be considered as substitute for a good diet. What exactly happens is you are going to consume B-complex vitamin tablets, capsules, then iron capsules, calcium capsules, vitamin D capsules, for how long? They are all short intervention. They are not long intervention. So, however, because no supplements contain all the benefits. 
provided by healthy food. Healthy foods are long-term interventions. You have to have regularly healthy foods. All these are only the substitutes only for some time. Later on, you have to come back to the your original diet. So this is my last slide. I would like to say, revise the whole thing, the key points. First of all, concentrate on diet when you are working from home in order to maintain a good health with a balanced diet. Individuals who enjoy breakfast every day, they will have better memories, more stable moods, energy and perform better. Here, a lot of research has been done, especially on children. You have the dinner at 7.30 or 8. And again, the next day, you are going to have the breakfast at 8 o'clock. So it is 12 hours, the gap. So you're breaking the fast, which is called as breakfast. You have to ask the child to have breakfast. And many of the children, they miss the breakfast. And there were a lot of studies. My own PhD student has worked on this. And we have a lot of publications also. Research publications are there. That two groups have been studied. The children who consume regular breakfast and the other children who do not. Children in sense, all the students who go to college also. And the other group is missing the breakfast two to three times a week. So we try to do the IQ test that is called as intelligent quotient test and also verified the marks with the teachers. They found that the children with their regular breakfast, they had scored higher in all the subjects when compared to the children who were missing the breakfast because their concentration level decreases. So it is always good to have breakfast and not only for the children who are going to school and colleges, it is also for others also because in order to have good metabolic, you should have, otherwise you start having a lot of problems like acidity and ulcers. Then eat breakfast. Try to concentrate breakfast with a good quality of protein. Make meal times into a healthy food. Then make time, at least one meal, if not all the three meals, one or two meals you have to eat with a family. And then you make it with a home-cooked meal. Ask the other members also to join you while cooking. And this will help them in order to know which food is good for health. Regular exercise is very, very necessary. And then you have social interaction is vital. Yeah, this is what I have told you. The recommended allowances, these are how much of the protein, how much of fat you have to take, how much of vitamin D, how much of iron, which I already mentioned. Here, the men and women are grouped into three groups. They call it as, in according to Indian Council of Medical Research, sedentary worker, moderate worker, and heavy worker. We all, the teachers and everyone of us are sedentary workers. The moderate workers are the farm laborers who work in the land, that is the farm, from eight hours continuously. And the Heavy workers are the stone cutters. So depending on the type of work and activity we do, all these allowances are given per day. And lastly, I would like to thank you and also put a word. Nowadays, many of the, the students, they do have the crash diets, especially the girls. They have a lot of crash diets and then Mediterranean diets and ketogenic diets. Any kind of diets or when you're going to gym and also if you're overweight, you want to come back to the fitness, anything, you have to have the supervision of a dietitian. You have to take all these kinds of diets under supervision of a doctor for any of the metabolic disorders or any kind of foods, you have to take advice of a dietitian. Please just do not read something or do not go to some kind of apps and take your own decision because it will definitely affect your health. So finally, I do say that maintain a balanced food. These are the key points for you to remember in order to have a good health and metabolic. Thank you so much for your patience here. If any questions, I welcome. Please do ask. Ma'am, uh, with your permission, would like to ask some questions, ma'am, which were given by some yeah, participants. Please, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah ma'am. Any questions? Yeah, any questions? Yes, ma'am. So as of now, like uh, all the youngsters, they're moving to the other cities and towns for the employment purpose, ma'am. They're staying in the PGs and hostels. Yeah. So there they cannot get the entire, I mean, uh, the actual requirement of vitamins and all. So how can mm. they manage their, uh, 
metabolism ma'am yeah see what exactly happens is we do have we have seen even in our hostel in our in the pg centers they do provide you the cereals pulses and vegetables fruits may not be in the diet okay other thing but you can buy lot of fruits you can buy vegetables and consume in the form of salads but i have observed because there are pg centers near my residence and near college the swiggies are in a queue you only like pizzas samosas and other noodles and other foods i think you can buy there's nothing wrong you can buy brown breads are available isn't it in when you go to any of the shop there are healthy foods definitely there are plenty are there this is not the excuse you need not cook but you can buy and eat isn't it they are working and sometimes if it is the thing get some home foods like suppose if i say do not eat salt more salt okay so that doesn't mean that you can avoid everything you can avoid certain foods but there are available good healthy foods which can be consumed for example if i say malt malt is available in the market you can bring the malt and whatever whenever they give you milk or hot water you just then mix it one or two spoons and you drink it that's a healthy drink in the morning hours don't you think so yes ma'am uh, thank yeah. you ma'am and there yeah. is uh, one more question ma'am yeah please uh, ma'am is it expensive to have good nutritious food ma'am it is not in fact it is cheaper isn't it you know the rate of the cereals and pulses and vegetables that is seasonal available vegetables and fruits okay and you also have the milk and milk products isn't it yes ma'am yeah milk is not very costly when you compare with other beverages like colas and other drinks how what is the rate of that so nutrition is not at all anything nutritious food is good it is not at all costly at home you can ask the persons who are cooking at home your mothers your sisters whoever is cooking at home that is why it's always nice no we advise men also to cook and purchase so that you will know what is the cost of it and how long it is likely to cook and other things isn't it what do you think yes ma i think i agree ma'am yeah it is, is not at all costly this is not at all costly any kind of food you take rice you have different kinds of rice varieties are available it is your choice to buy what kind of rice you want you want completely polished rice because many people we want rice in a white color oh it should be like a jasmine flower mallepu la gundal annam that's a wrong concept thyme and riboflavin niacin is completely lost in milling how many of us consume brown rice okay and how many of us use ragi millets they consider it is poor man's diet it's not very expensive and it's such a good source which has got calcium it has got protein it has got fiber got iron isn't it and then wheat atta is good it has got fiber and protein 12 grams of protein it has the chapati is consumed consumed but how many of us like chapati when you place pizza in front of you which is prepared with maida refined flour which is costly isn't it and then fats and oils you can take care of them i see many of the youngsters only the cheese they grate the cheese and add to sandwiches and other uh, snack foods isn't it yes, anything yes, anything occasionally is good see never we nutritionists say that avoid we don't say avoid even diabetes mellitus we say in i mean no in small quantities occasionally we always recommend like that there are words moderate adequate liberal and small amounts yes ma'am thank you ma'am and there is one more question from sudhira lingamaneni ma'am yeah yeah she has yeah. asked about thyroid any specific yeah. diet for thyroid madam the specific diet see thyroid deficiency occurs from sometimes from the expecting stage also it comes so when the child is born we call it that symptom as cretinism that is mentally and physically the child gets affected in the growth and then also when they as they grow there are two symptoms which are called as hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism 
So after testing with the doctor, with the biochemical analysis, you have to say which group they belong to. Accordingly, you have to take. So goiter is also the main problem in thyroid because cretinism for children in goiter. Because usually your thyroid gland should be 25 grams. But during this stage, it gets increased to 250 grams. That is the reason iodized salt. Okay. So try to consume the salt which has got iodine in it. And the second one is you have to eat especially the iodine, the fruits and vegetables grown near the sea area. If you're a non-vegetarian, consumption of fish is very good. Okay, there's a person by Gwaneth Zimin who says, I'm a vegan. Madam, I really appreciate you for being a vegan, but it's very difficult for this diet. That is why I said, when we talk about crash diets, Mediterranean diets, ketogenic diets, and vegan diets, it is very difficult to plan because you people do not consume even milk and milk products also, I think, isn't it? Apart from uh, the thing. So in a vegan diet, you have to concentrate a lot on the fruits and vegetables, okay? And try to take a lot of sprouts. That is what we recommend. Sprouts are very good. For example, you can make a Zumba diet. What is a Zumba diet? The Zumba, you say is, you can add 10 foods and make a big meal out of it. For example, I have told you that you soak the grains and you sprout them. That is the pulses if you take like green gram, you soak it and then sprouts are there. And then that is vitamin C rich, fiber rich and protein. To this you add cucumber. That is the second ingredient which gives a lot of moisture. Third is you add tomato. That is vitamin C and beta carotene. Fourth is please add groundnuts. You add soaked groundnuts. Again, they are rich sources of the oil as well as the protein. Next, you add guava. Guava is sibekai, that is jamkai. You cut it and add because it contains a lot of pectin into it and it also vitamin C. Then you can add a little bit of tamarind. Tamarind is, is a very good source and lime because it enhances the, some of the micronutrients. So you try to add other vegetables like try to add onions and try to add a little bit of grated carrot. So all this will add up to 10 ingredients. Sometimes you can add rice flakes also, atukulu. So when you mix all this in a vegan diet, you contain it, you, we call it as zumbo meat. So it contains all the nutrients. So this is one advice I can give, madam, but it's very, very difficult to be a vegan. Another question. Ma'am, can you suggest any diet which controls weight and also provide nutrition? Madam, it is very easy. It is not at all difficult to be slim, trim and physically fit. Okay. And which is very, very important also nowadays. Okay. The main reason... Apart from the questions, apart from the joke, what I can say is, especially for the women or the girl students, I can say, when your blouses become tight or your dresses become tight, you become very conscious and depressed. It happens with all of us. So always maintain the weight in a proper way. So how do you maintain weight? You have a good breakfast. Okay? Whatever you have, our traditional breakfasts are very, very nice. You have idli, you can have dosa, don't add too much of oil. Then you can have upma. Then in, you can have you people in Andhra. That it is famous pesaratu. All then. Then one day you can have atukul upma, and another day you can have some chapatis. So in the full week you have whatever the traditional breakfast. Please do have for the lunch. Please have whatever is your staple diet. You can have the rice or the chapati with at least two to three vegetables should be there what it is with one palya or in sambar with a vegetable. And you should have yogurt, either curds or buttermilk because they are probiotics. And you should have one fruit every day. For whatever it is, if you have one fruit, whatever is available, you can just have one fruit. And in the evening, if you want to have snacks, I prepare any sundal, sundal in sprouts or eat some vegetables. Or again, you can have a fruit, there is no problem. And marry biscuits are also advisable because they contain the fiber. It is not like cookies which contain more of fat. And have an early dinner. Okay. So when you have early dinner, again have whatever you have, the rice or the chapatis with the vegetables and then sambar or a thing. 
and because see once we say we are non vegetarians i am sure no indian is 100% non vegetarians because it on weekly we eat and even in those days mondays we don't eat thursdays we don't eat saturdays we don't eat so we are not at all called non vegetarians also we are sort of vegetarians only and vegetables plant foods have got so many nutrients so be in a, for a some time be a vegan if not vegan be in a vegetarian diet but consume egg egg is very very important because bioavailability is very important with egg if you are little conscious take away the yolk boil the egg and consume thank you otherwise, so much ma'am otherwise you take my email id more of the suggestion for underway i mean for of uh, maintaining fitness i can give you a better diet now this is dr nallu krishna rao sir consumption of food calories intake as per work and daily exercise may help to reduce weight madam yes sir that is what i recommended in the last table of mine we are classified into sedentary moderate and heavy workers sir the sedentary worker our requirements are less when compared to the farm laborers and stone cutters sir so depending upon the work what we do so we cannot because they do heavy work so their requirements of calories and protein and iron and vitamin d the foods are more when compared to the sedentary workers yes it reduces in weight sir whatever like i said balance no sir it should be in a metabolic way sir energy metabolism we say whatever intake proteins when you intake positive protein metabolism is only for the women who are in the expecting stage because they, she has to eat for two persons the fetus growth there you need positive metabolism negative metabolism takes when a person has some disease or has met with an accident or with some infection they will not be able to eat regular diet so definitely they lose the weight so in order to have an equilibrium with a proper metabolic whatever your intake output should be there so how does it come so have a balanced diet have a good physical fitness Rajesh Sri Jampala sir hello sir good afternoon how are you so what is the utility of intermittent fasting sir for the fasting itself we have to know i have to know the complete chart sir yes. otherwise it's very difficult to answer this question because during fasting sir sometimes i tell you we tell in the name of fasting but we eat more than the regular diet because we say okay kartik masa so for example in the kartik masa or every saturday i do want to fast so in the fasting they do not take they say it is a day fasting night they don't fast so i don't know what do they take in the night timings some people eat during day time and fast in the night some people don't eat at all so when you are going for intermittent fasting sir your age is important whether you are an adolescent age or whether you are in a vulnerable group age the women or the adult and suppose if you have any of the metabolic disorders sir like hypertension or acidity or diabetes mellitus we do not recommend fasting for them at all if the glucose level decreases they go for hypotension so please do not fast only when i know what is the fasting i can prescribe the diet or recommend the diet thank you madam thank you very much you are welcome sir there another question anything is okay uh, uh, thank you so much ma'am uh, yeah. for the very informative session you could yeah. cover all the inform information okay. and uh, all points you covered ma'am thank you very much once again now yeah. our student of uh, first yeah, time i think stand, student should ask questions ma'am definitely yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now our student of uh, first year MBA, Fauzi will give formal vote of thanks, ma'am. Okay. See, if the students have not asked question, we teachers will take it in two ways. One is you haven't understood anything, so no questions. Another mm -hmm. one is you have understood everything, so no clarification. So what do I take now? Second one is better. Second one is better. <laughs> <laughs> no option. Sure. Anyway. But there was a small problem in the PPTs in the beginning. Yeah, oh, no. You had a patient's uh, hearing, yeah, and uh, yeah. it was clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay, who is this? Yeah. Hadasha Israel. What yes. kind of? Yeah, there is a question from her. Yeah, Hadasha Israel. Okay, what kind of diet is advisable 
for a calorie deficit diet. Are you an undernourished person? Hello? Hello? Ma'am, actually, it's a question from YouTube, ma'am. You cannot uh, interact directly with them. Ah, okay, okay. What kind of diet is advisable, okay, for a calorie deficit diet? Okay. You want deficiency of cal calories in that. Okay, very good question. For a calorie deficit diet, what I advise is you have adequate quantities of cereals, okay? Whatever you are taking, the staple diet is very, very important. You should have because carbohydrate foods you have to consume because it is for the daily activities. Because see, the most important is both carbohydrates and fats per gram, it gives four calories of the energy. So we have to have. And according to recommendation, the carbohydrate, you need to have 300 to 400 grams depending on your age. Okay. So proteins also depending on your age. Whereas the fat... It gives 9 calories per gram. For example, if you consume 1 teaspoon of oil or a fat, it contains 45 calories. Okay, 5 grams contain. So your recommendation is you have to have only up to 20 or 25 grams of fat depending on your age. So how many teaspoons it will be? The teaspoons will be only 5. Whole day you can have only 5 teaspoons of either fat or oil. So in that case, you try to, but at the same time, we do not advise fat-free diets. It's not good at all. So anything in a moderate quantity, you have the cereals from the food pyramid, you have the pulses, you have the milk and milk, and then you have plenty of fruits and vegetables. You can have raw vegetables in the fresh form, but only things sometimes you have to clean them very well because sometimes the pesticides and all are very important. So you please clean them in a running water, we say or warm water, you clean them and then consume. consume. When you are consuming cucumber and other peel, do not peel the skin because they add to the fiber. And when you are consuming apple, some have the habit of peeling the skin. And when you are consuming orange or musambi, the complete inside also they peel off the skin. All these are fiber. So try to have good fiber in your diet that always reduces the calories. Next question, Medikonda Manoranjani. Is intermittent fasting useful for thyroid? No, you have to have the supervision under the doctor. Until unless the doctor says, because I told you there are two types. Hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism. Hyper is 30% extra, hypo is less. So when you have, you have to have what kind of the deficiency, which is more whether it is. We say hyperactive also in this case. So some doctors, they do advise you what kind of diet. So depending upon your what kind of the symptoms of thyroid, then you have to go to dietitian. Then only you can plan a diet there. One has to be very careful here what kind of food because activity has to be increased there. So please, first you find out what kind of thyroid problem you have. Then we can recommend the diet. There is a person, Mohammed Fauzi. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yeah, good afternoon. good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I would like to give a vote of thanks on behalf ah, okay. of. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, good please. afternoon, everyone. I am Mohammed Fauzi, student of first MBA PEP SIT. On the behalf of Women's Cell of PEP Siddhartha Institute of Technology and Women's Cell of PB Siddhartha College of Arts and Science, we thank. Dr. Vijay Lakshmi Garu for accepting our request and delivering the useful and informative session. I would like to note, I would like to take the some, some of the important takeaways from the today's session. That is, no supplementary contain all benefits provided by good deliver, good dietary habit of having dinner and social interactions is vital. And family meals offer opportunity to catch up your kids' daily lives. Concentrate on diet since we are working from home and supervision of dietitian and physical exercise physical exercises is important. Diet is very good until and unless of your daily and physical activities. And once again, we express our sincere gratitude and we all get educated and inspired with your words. 
thank you madam thank you thank management so of siddhartha we thank management of siddhartha group of institution and our respected principal dr k shivaji babu garu for supporting us conducting the webinar we express our sincere gratitude to dr rajesh c jampala garu dean academics and Administra administration pb siddhartha college of arts and science for extensive cooperation in the organizing of webinar our heartfelt thanks to dr p adarshmi garu for conducting the webinar for the well being of girls students and women faculty we thank women cell of pb siddhartha college of arts and science for being associated to conduct this webinar i also thank all the participants of their active participation in the webinar finally thank you for giving me this golden opportunity for giving a vote of thanks thank you ma'am okay thank you so much it's my pleasure once again thank you ma'am thank you very much yeah no adi lakshmi thanks a lot for giving the opportunity and sharing some of our uh, ideas with your uh, faculty as well as the students and i professionally thank uh, dean of your institute for giving us the opportunity the only thing please follow all these nutritional tips diet tips and stay fit thank you so much yes ma'am yes thank you very much bye have a bye. nice day